Hi and welcome here on Pierrusini.com, the wine show. And well, today once again outside, uh, I'm quite happy. I have a really special guest today here on my show, um, Stefan Pevgen. Nice to have you on my show. You're welcome. Can you tell the people uh, where we are right about right now, actually, because um, it's quite a hidden place. Yeah, you are here in the northern part of Medoc, yeah. which is called Bar Medoc. Uh, so north, north of saint Estève, right? North of saint Estève, about 60 kilometers north of Bordeaux. Yeah. 15 kilometers north of saint Estève. Okay, and uh, tell people something about, um, yeah, I mean, when did you start this project, actually? Because you are German, you used to live in uh, or work in Belgium, now you're here in, in, in Bordeaux. Yeah, I quite nice story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I studied agriculture. My dream was always to become a practical farmer. But uh, there was uh, not enough space. As such, I moved into uh, uh, the management position in uh, agriculture industry. I was working a lot in the uh, international environment, which I enjoyed very much. Yeah, yeah, of course. So that was marvelous. I had a lot of freedom, huge responsibilities, and I liked it very much. I was traveling a lot, always in the plane, jumping in and out, and hedging different countries. Uh, it was quite stressy, okay. but fun as well. And when and did you have the idea to, okay, I want to go to... I came, uh, once actually. in a while it, it uh, came up again, why not uh, turning back into practical farming. And uh, finally it was so that uh, the company I worked for got acquired. Okay. And uh, after the integration uh, I had to realize they had their own management. Uh, I got uh, uh, what is so called a golden handshake. Okay. So, uh, um, uh, relatively quick, I had uh, interesting offers from other companies, but um, I said to myself, now I'm, I'm 46. If it's not now, it will never be. Oh, 46 is quite young. Yeah, but uh, to start a project like this here, I think. Uh, yeah. I think 46 is. Uh, Old enough. <laughs> golden handshake for the golden years, actually. Yes. But uh, and wh why? Um, how did you end up here, actually, in the north north side of Medoc? I mean, uh, let's say Tuscany is great. Yeah. Uh, Southern Rhone is great. Yeah. Bordeaux is mine. This region is quite unknown, actually, for many wine lovers. Mm -hmm. How did you? Um, how, how did you find this place, actually? It was and what, not. What was um, the main thing that you said? Wow, this is where I want to grow my 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 chateau. Yeah, actually, uh, in the early beginning of my search, I was looking about uh, all places. Even I was thinking about Toscana, but uh, finally, uh, I, I I simply enjoy these Medocan wines That's most yeah. uh, because of the pricing of the Grand Chateau. Um, I have been looking for other areas being a consumer for many years, so, uh, but I always came back to the middle for some reason, so, yeah. <laughs> even though uh, it was difficult to find good wines for reasonable prices, uh, but uh, you, they are still there, and uh, I've been looking for, for wineries in, in Corbier, interesting places in uh, Minerva, uh, but at the end I said, I have to go to Medoc, there's no other way out there. Like Medoc is Medoc. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, let's say, um, could you describe a little bit um, what's so... Um, is, it, is there a main difference between this side here, Medoc, and their, let's say, their more renowned appellations, like Boyac, saint julien Margot, saint Estève. Um, is there a difference? What do you say? Um, for me, uh, as I was looking to, to settle here, uh, Poyak was uh, simply out of reach because prices for the, for the wine yards is, is far too high, you cannot afford it. Yeah. Uh, the big uh, chateaus, uh, they just buy anything and uh, no way out. saint Estef uh, could have been possible, but uh, it would have been a very small wine yard. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here in Medoc, I was quite astonished, uh, only 10-15 uh, kilometers away, 
you can find very good terroir with good uh, good wines, good old wines for very reasonable prices still. And uh, I recognized the last two years that I was not the only one who, who was looking for for wineries here. Some uh, some uh, Chinese investors bought recently a few wineries. So I think it was a. You was choice. first. I was before. Luckily, uh, yeah. yeah. I think I, I did a good timing. In, in, uh okay. Uh, Stefan, we didn't mention the name of the chateau actually. It's called Chateau. Chateau Le Reis. Yeah. It's our uh, best uh, quality wine. So you have two, two wines, three wines? Uh uh, actually, I, I did uh, quite a strange thing. I bought three chateaux. Three? Three, yes. Okay. So Chateau La Suisse, which is a Cru Bourgeois, very good wine, uh, typical Medoc, uh, excellent, uh, excellent quality. Chateau Le Reis, uh, which was in former times part of Chateau uh, La Suisse, but it got uh, divided. And both chateaus were managed by the same person, so it was one winery, actually only two chateaus. And on top of that, I bought also uh, Clos de Moulin from, uh, from a winemaker who wanted to retire, but uh, he didn't have anybody to follow. So this is a, a very small uh, chateau, and we start there with 2011 only, so Clos de Moulin, uh, which is also a very good terroir, and uh, I'm sure you make a good wine. Okay, and you are, um, let's say, I guess that you are responsible for the vineyard. Uh, also for the wine making process, right? Yes. It's yes. your job? Yes, it's I mean, my job. It, it's like, how do it works? Like learning by doing? Do we have like a consultant or friends or Actually, angels who... Yeah, <laughs> sometimes even angels, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the very good thing, and that was also uh, one driver for my decision yeah. to invest here in this place, is that the former owner, Patrick Chaumont, he will uh, stay with me for two years. Okay. And he just explained everything. He's, he's uh, extremely happy that somebody continues his, uh, his winery. His, uh, we, we became friends in the time and uh, we understand each other very, very good. It's, it's quite uh, important having a good teacher. Right? Oh yes, yes, yeah? yes. He's, he's a marvelous teacher. Okay, so um, um, I, I guess that you're also a marvelous student, right? Yeah. I, I like it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so uh, we're going to taste today um, Chateau Chateau Le Reis. Le Reis, 08, 09, and 010. And 010, yes. Okay. So 08 actually was made by Patrick Chaumont. Yeah. 09 was also uh, the vinification process was made by Patrick. Yeah. But uh, I still could influence the selection for Chateau Le Reis. Yeah. We, uh, the wine when I when I came here, the wine was in, in the barrique. So we could choose a different parik to make the good, the best assemblation for for the rice. And uh, 2010 is, is in fact my very first wine. Okay, so I'm really curious and uh, we're ready to taste. Okay, so first wine is 2008 uh, Chateau Le Reis. Le Reis, Le yes. Reis. Okay, so I'm quite curious. Uh, can you say say something about the Sapache? The, 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 um, yeah. Actually, Thanks. it's so mostly this is, Cabernet uh, or? Uh, 2008 it was 50-50 Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, Merlot. Yeah. So the, it, it was already a very good selection uh, from old wines, 45 years old uh, wines. Quite important wine. This is, uh, I think, also reason why you yes. drive you to... Yes. So this, this terroir in combination with these old wines, this is marvelous. This is a fantastic basis. Uh, to make high quality wines. Okay, so um, this wine stays in new barrels or? This was in one year old barrels. So uh, Patrick, he used to buy uh, one year old barrels from Sociano de Malé okay. for a pretty long time. And uh, also some from uh, La Tour Sur Jean. And he did uh, the second and third year in this well, this wine is actually quite, uh, it's a red, yeah, red garnet colored, deep. It's a light transparency. It's, uh, it's quite open, it's somehow meaty. 
Yeah, yeah? it starts Food? to open now. Yeah, it was closed for uh, for the last uh, 15 months. Now it starts to open. The bouquet is coming back. Glad so to be here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, and of course. Yeah, it's a uh, dark nice. food, very dark nice food, yeah. Yes. yes. If you would have tasted this uh, six months ago, no way. Okay. No way to get in touch. So let's taste it. It's a um, typical Medoc. Yeah, I mean, this wine is like um, it comes in malt in the palate. It's like um, first soft, then it expand, it's getting expanded expansion. Yes. Uh, really, um, yeah, high tannins. I mean, yeah, but good quality tannins uh, in combination with a really impressive minerality for me. Yeah, and refreshing acidity. It's medium bodied, but you have it's uh, juicy. You have this um, yeah, the berry aromas. Nice some, structure. Yeah. Good. Nice complexity. Actually, it was this wine which convinced me to come here. To huh? come here, yes. Also, Two years ago. Yeah, can imagine. Well, 08 is the vintage is like mediocre, it's, actually. Yeah, yes, it's an average year, not too bad. Uh, but here, uh, also, if you would taste uh, the 2007 from uh, La Reis, it's it's a very good quality. Okay, so um, next wine. Uh, 09 Chateau Le Reis um, was classified as Medoc, right? Okay. Yes. And, Appellation uh, Contrôlée Medoc. Okay. So this is your first vintage, actually, where you took part. Right? Where I took where part, where I could uh, influence uh, the, uh, the final assemblage for, for Chateau Le Reis. Okay. So, so 2009 was a very good year. Yeah. Like It's, many know. Uh, Yes, you? Yeah. we uh, we had uh, we tried the different barrels, uh, and actually uh, all uh, all lots were very good. It was finally the barrel which was deciding. Okay. The, the kind of wood which was deciding for the rice here. Okay. So Sepage is uh, the same 50-50? Sepage is here a slight increase in Cabernet. Okay. So it's 55% Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, 45% Malo. Okay. And uh, it's it's a bit older selection, so uh, it's it's about uh, 50 years old wines, and it's a very strong wine. It's it's. Uh, Accidenti, we say in Italy, actually. Okay, I'm curious to taste this wine. Yes. Uh, the colors, once again, it's like this uh, typically, yeah, deep garnet red color. Yeah, it's a, it's a pity it starts to close. So yeah. since I recognized a month ago that uh, that the bouquet is is almost disappearing. Yeah, but uh, actually there is still um, some fragrancy actually. But it should actually it should overflow the, the glass. But um, well, but it um, we get the hints that it's getting dense to the quartz mm. more. Yeah. So this is. Uh, more than 14% alcohol, which is quite unusual for this Okay, area. 09 was quite strong yeah. vintage. Yes. Wow. Ah, that's something, huh? I mean, it's like... Uh, Explosive. It, Yeah, explosive is like uh, quite, um, not quite, it's like juicy, it's uh, the tannins are like, um, I like those Maserati tannins actually, uh -huh. yeah, good acidity, well balanced, uh, well structured, it's like, um, yeah, once again, this uh, yeah dark berry aromas you have on the palate, yes. it's uh, um, pff, impressive, uh, Ali, it's uh, the minerality, once again, Yes. it's really, yeah. And then this roasted Astonishing. cassis. Yeah, absolutely. Think, Creme de cassis. This, uh, yeah, fantastic. Quite, this uh, well, it's in this moment actually quite young. Yeah. But this will have a great future. This will have a very great future. This, uh, all wines, uh, it's typical for this area. If they are good, they are typical Van de Garde. So you should keep them at least uh, 10 years. And then they are marvelous. Stefan, I'm really glad to be here. This is good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, now this is a... Brand new 
Yeah, label actually. Yeah, we we decided to to O10. change the label. Yeah. So uh, uh, <coughs> actually, what I recognized with the, with the, with the former label, um, which is quite quite nice. Many people had difficulty to read Le Rice. And there's much better readable. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Let's see uh, if it's also better to drink. So uh, 2010 is uh, when when I saw the harvest coming in. Uh, it was a very small harvest. Yeah. So uh, there was some some loss uh, in in the Merlot area due to coulage. That was a pity. Yeah. Coulage but, uh, is in, in, the, in the beginning. In, in the, the beginning, spring, in yeah. the flowering. Yeah. Face, so uh, the the average yield for the rice was uh, below forty hectoliter, very small harvest, but fantastic quality, yeah, uh, beautiful tannins. So um, with this small volume, I decided to put it in uh, completely new barracks. Okay. And I took uh, wood from Allier and Trancé. Not too much toasting, so uh, just. Uh, Freshness of the wood, so the elegance. Yes. Okay. And, um, well, it's uh, this wine is actually. Yeah, it's more open than the O9, right? Yes, it is. Today, it's still more open. It will close during the next six months. But it's compact. Thick. It is uh, strong stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's a lot of uh, impact of dark berries, really yeah. dark berries, and yes. uh, well, of course, you have this uh, fine. Um, Dark chocolate, also some Arabian coffee. It's like really, yeah, it's nice complexity. So even it was completely in, in new barracks. It's yeah. not dominant at all. There's, no, no, you no, don't, no. Um, you have all the, 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 the fruit is in the upfront, yes. actually. Okay, let's taste it. Superb. Well, the difference between the 09 or 10 is definitely that um, the, the tannins are more supple, yep. actually. Yeah, it's rounder. Yeah. It's more juicier. Yeah. It's a um, stronger structure. Yeah. More complexity. Whoa, and really. It's um, long aftertaste. Mouse, yeah, it's, uh, mouse, the mouse feeling is quite. Uh, it's, yeah. yeah. It's fully budded. Wow. So. Actually, I'm. Um, yeah, Stefan, I'm. I'm Really happy that I yeah passed by here, in the, actually what's the name of the of the village? Bigger Dan. Bigger Dan. So it's it's a small community uh, uh, which uh, is going down to the Gironde. Okay. And uh, some of our vineyards are going straight down to the Gironde. So uh, this is very important for the small microclimate. I hope the water won't rise. Huh? No, it should not. <laughs> okay, so thanks a lot and uh, well, I wish you everything best for your project, uh, for this really, uh, I mean, I think that you made the right decision and uh, yeah, good luck in the future. Maybe I will pass by and, and, uh, for tasting new vintages and uh, for you, my wine lovers, this was the interview with Stefan Pefkin from Cologne actually, right? Yeah, born in Cologne, yes. Okay, and um, Cologne, Cologne. And um, well, I hope I see you in the next clip.